How do I feel the club head? That is a question I get asked almost every day. I've just had Stee in for two days. Stee came from Jersey, left-hander. So Stee was kind of releasing the club and not really feeling anything, really. He couldn't sense where the club face was. He said, I can't feel it in space. I can't feel when I'm closing it or opening it or really differentiating between an out-to-in or a, an into-out path. And so he was getting quite inconsistent ball flights. He was very capable of ripping that little draw. So he knew it was there, but he, he couldn't do it on a consistent enough basis. And so the first place we started was with club face awareness. We might not all have a club head spare. If you have, brilliant. If not, I'll show you why the mobile phone's important. But I'm gonna show first the exercise just with a club head. What I'm gonna do is take this club and I'm gonna hold it there with my trail hand and I'm gonna hold it in the fingers, fingers there underneath the sole and put my thumb on top. And now my palm has just become my club face. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just swing it. Now we know we've got to compress the golf ball. So that sweet spot has got to be going down. And now I can feel what my wrist has to do. So I can swing it back and I want this wrist to swing freely. I want to get some, I want to get some power. So I can let the wrist hinge and I can feel how this club face opens up on the way back. And I can feel how it closes, if you like, points down. Just allow this wrist to move. Notice the elbows bending too and the shoulders relaxed. We're, we're letting movement happen. Just swinging this club face up in the air with the intention of then swinging it down to the golf ball and pointing it down at the ball. So that it's now actually starting to rotate a little bit. So this club face is pointing down and I want this to rotate whilst it's pointing down. Post what would be impact here, this club face is pointing away from me and down to the ground. This is a very different feeling I'm getting in my wrist to a normal swinging action. So I'm not extending flexing to open and close it. Look at that, how do I time this? I just rotate and I can go over there with it and rotate it. I can go over here. Me rotating this face isn't dependent on the direction the club's swinging, i.e. the path. If you haven't got a club, I suggest you get one because we're going to be using it in a minute, just swinging in the, swinging in the room or swinging in the garden. What I'm going to use is my mobile phone. Now taking the mobile phone, imagine that's the club face. This hasn't got, I mean, with the club face, we've actually got loft, so we actually have to de-loft it more because this is flat, it's not lofted. So it's an advantage really already. And I'm just holding it like that as if you were, as if you were going to look at a message. And what I'm going to do is swing it back and notice where it wants to go. It wants to point away. Okay, so we can let this wrist free, freely move. And this is pointing away. Now I'm going to point it down at the golf ball. Notice I'm not extending my arm because that might make it quite difficult to point at the ball. I'm just maintaining these, this flexion. Notice the body's already starting to move. You'll probably find your body adapting to your intention of pointing this at the ball, it's starting to move in response, it's reacting. What we're recognizing now is the feel we've got of this form here. And now I'm gonna keep the face of the phone pointing away from me. And now I'm gonna rotate it. The advantage we've got with the phone now is that we can put it in our lead hand. So now it's in my left hand, face pointing me. It's as if I'm reading a text message. And I'm just gonna swing it back and I'm gonna have a look. So I could, I could see the face. When I now swing down, I want to be able to read that text message. So now I've got this pointing at me, I could read the text message. Now I wanna to continue to read that text message and I'm gonna let the face rotate. So I'm rotating this anti-clockwise and I can read the message. It's not facing away. It's not facing at you guys. It's not facing down to the ground. So you can see there's flexion in this lead wrist, but I'm not thinking of flexion in the lead wrist. I'm just pointing this at me and I'm rotating it as well and when I'm doing this I could actually swing out towards you guys and rotate the face so this would be an into out path with a rotating face and look all this space is now available so what does this feel like with a golf club well let's just take a hold of the club head shaft just up in the air like this and what we're going to do is swing it back and now I want to point the sweet spot at the ball 
look how my body's already starting to move. It might be quite recognisable in, in terms of all those textbooks and all those golf swings you see as well on TV of kind of functional patterns. Here, look, now that's pointing down at the ball. Okay, now I want to keep that pointing down. I want to rotate, just like the mobile phone. I'm rotating this anti-clockwise. And I could, again, swing towards you and do it. I can swing where I like. My path is not being compromised. But if I'm used to doing this to square the face, my path is severely compromised. As soon as I want to square the face, I've got to start doing this early as well because it takes a long time. There's a big arc it needs to make to close the face in time. So I have to start early. That's where the early releases can sometimes come from. And now my, my, my swing is it's going left as a right-hander. So my path is really compromised just in an effort to close the face. But here, it's absolutely not compromised. Hi guys, I'm super excited to announce we're gonna be running two one-day golf schools in October. It's just been confirmed. We're gonna be running one-day golf schools on the 17th and the 18th at the Fraser Golf Academy in Gateshead. And we're also gonna be running two one-day schools at the Golf Groove. So we're revisiting the Golf Groove in London, in Wimbledon, on the 23rd and the 24th of October. There's six places on each day. So I look forward to seeing you there. Please register your interest, follow the link, and we'll be hopefully seeing you there on what will be another great day. We've had a lot of success with these one-day schools, fantastic feedback. Everyone's really enjoyed them, learnt a lot, and it's really helped to elevate their games. So I hope we can do the same for you, and I look forward to seeing you at one of the schools. So what I'm going to do now with my trail hand is I'm just going to move it up the club, just a little bit, up the shaft. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Point it there. Not go any further. We're just talking about release patterns, that's all. Now I'm going to point the club face down at the ball. And it's also pointing down, but also out. Because I want it to be open, if you like, for a draw. It's got to be pointing right at my target to start the ball right. Because we know the club face influences where the ball starts. Now I can let the club swing. And as it swings out to the right, I can let it rotate but it's rotating while it's pointing down. This is quite different. If we were just to extend this out here and put the other hand on, this is quite a different feeling. And if I was to swing just back and through to this same place, it's a very, very different feeling to what I normally experience. Once we've done it slightly up from the hosel, we can move up to the middle of the shaft and we can just point it down there and we can point it down at the golf ball and we can rotate it. It's pointing away from me, just like the mobile phone still. And then I can move a bit further up and do the same thing. And then I can go to the grip. And then I can put my hand on, maintaining that place. And I can swing back and through over the ball and feel that journey. I could introduce a little bump, a little bump from off the ground. Don't suggest this if you're in your living room, guys. Okay. Just bumping it off the ground. Notice. My path here isn't compromised. I want the club to go that way, and it's going out that way. Grip it back, put my grip on the club, both hands, swing back and through to that same place. Feeling that rotation. And then when we play a golf shot, recognising the outcome here, not just with the golf ball we intend, but the outcome here with, the, with our movement, I recognise this place I'm swinging to and through, and I can see where I'm, I can feel it and see it. and start to see that ball flight now. And now there's a reason for hitting balls in terms of recognizing and regulating our movement with the outcome, because we've got some feedback. We're getting feedback from the feeling we're getting with our movement and feedback from the golf ball, because we know face and path. So wherever the club face was pointing, that's where the ball starts. And relative to that, where the club head is swinging gives us the spin on the ball. So this becomes as recognizable as the palm of the hand. It's just further away. You could use this end of the golf club as a guide of where the path is. That's the path to the left. That's the path to the right. Use the butt end as a guide. Guide that butt end through the ball for the draw and rotate the face down and let that face continue out and point to the ground. For the fade, point it to the ball and now go left. This is still pointed down, but notice this is left. Path, left, face down face is right of the path. It's still rotated away. That mobile phone's still pointing away. But that's a feel for a fade.
to my fade. Look at the different form here. Just start off with say a 30, 40, 50% speed swing tempo, just half swings, nice and smooth. So you can feel what's going on. You're getting some feedback. You can kind of sense what's happening and then we can build it up. It's like learning to drive your car. You don't go straight onto the motorway at 70 mile an hour, start off slow and you're still moving and still operating the machinery but you're doing it at a pace, a speed that you can recognize and explore. Imagine you're just trying to hit these low running shots, trying to shape the ball in right to left first, then left to right, low running shots. And then just hold that finish and get a feel for what you've just done there. Swing back and through. Start on a more micro level and then build up to what would be a full swing, let's say macro level. And then left, what's it like to swing left? Club face down and then let it rotate. And there's a fade. So little swings and then build up into bigger swings. Let yourself continue the journey, continue the arc back and through. We're not talking about body movements today. We're not talking about drop and pop, we're not talking about ground reaction forces, we're just talking about good old fashioned club face awareness. So we've got to feel it first. So guys, I hope that's been interesting. You've enjoyed listening to that and maybe trying it in your, in your living room. If not, go and get a grab a club, get your mobile phone, have a little play around. But we're just exploring movement. There's no fixed way. There's no regimented kind of must do, must conform to these positions or nothing else goes. It's like these are just experiencing how we can use our body in a way that we can relate to through feeling and understanding. We're bringing context to it that's going to allow us to create a much more vivid picture in terms of movement and outcome so we can join the dots and control that face path relationship through club face awareness. Thank you.